Good day, YouTube. Back with another video here. And as you can see, this is another Copart order that I uh, received. This is a 2022 Chevy Silverado that I got. Uh, the primary damages are to the front bumper, but also has some uh, driver's side cosmetic uh, issues that I will be addressing also. But the primary uh, reason for this video, since I'm removing the uh, front cap, I've decided to change the color of the uh, tow hooks. Now, it would be easy to just paint over them with a can of spray paint. But uh, because I've been doing a bit of uh, dabbling with the uh, powder coating here, I've decided to give it a nice red color of powder, which will give the uh, truck a much more sportier look. And I just wanted to take you along with the process here to show how I removed the old powder. I prepped the surface for the new powder and also the outcome of the uh, full application here. Now, as you can see with the Ryobi angle grinder, this is just a uh, soft abrasive pad that is removing the powder, but at the same time, not causing any scratches to the uh, metal here. Now, uh, we know when it comes to these uh, parts here, to have a great outcome, it all depends on the uh, process and the outcome of your preparation here. So that's what I'm doing. I want to make sure that I get this down to the metal without causing any damage to the surface of the metal so that when I do lay the new powder on, everything applies easily and uh, smooth with a beautiful look to it here. So as you can see on the table here, there's an assortment of tools that I do have. Uh, there were just some areas in the tow hook that were a bit difficult to reach into, so I'm kind of trying out different tools just to see which one would give me better access and which one actually does a better job in removing the powder and not causing deep scratches on the uh, surface of the metal here. Sandblasting is the better option for most uh, businesses that do produce powder coating. But uh, pretty much since I have a small garage, uh, I've also looked at this option as being something that will work for me since it's just minor uh, work that I'm doing here. I never take the approach as if there's just only one way of doing things. I'm always trying to find other ways, easier ways, and also w ways that will work with the tools that you have. But as you can see here, YouTube, uh, the parts are nicely scraped off with the powder and it's nice and smooth. The abrasive wheels that I did use actually did remove the powder, but it also seemed to have polished the surface of the metal. And as you can see, it's nice, shiny, it's smooth. And as you can also see, this is my work area here. I got a couple of heat lamps that I purchased from Amazon in the uh, red powder here, which I will be applying. That's through uh, prismatic powders. And uh, I'm working with the Eastwood Dual Voltage Powder Coating Gun here, which seems to work great for small jobs. I just come to find you have to be really careful on how you apply the powder because uh, this gun has sporadic moments where it kind of shoots out more than what you would want. So it's pretty much just a technique of watching and knowing how the gun actually works to get it to do the job that you need it to do. Now, I like to have the parts face the lights. I'd say I'd give it about three to four inches, depending on how thick the metal is and how much heat it would actually take to get that metal to the proper temperature. 
so that the powder actually sticks to it here. Now, as you can see, it's just prepping. I got all my wires hung, the aluminum paper, and uh, make sure that you also scrape the areas where all of the metal are making contact because this machine works with grounding, which actually permits through the metal so that the uh, powder could actually stick. So what it does, it negatively charges the uh, model, which causes the powder to be attracted to the surface of the uh, material. So this is pretty much my basic setup here. This is the connector, which connects to the line of all of the metal, which the part attaches to. And this is what sends that negative charge to the uh, model here. And as you can see, making sure that all of the points are nicely clean so that there is no interference to cause lack of performance of the parts being charged and uh, because I've had these uh, bottles sitting for a long time they do tend to get clumpy so make sure that you kind of break up all of the clumps that are in there because this may cause hiccups during the output of your powder coating uh, process here now before I apply the powder to the part, I like to do a preheat just to get the part up to a nice temperature. That way when I do start to apply the powder, it actually starts to melt on the part and I can see how the process is going here. But I just come to find that it doesn't make a difference whether you do preheat or not. It's just that the part is already at a high temperature and it starts to actually cure that powder in the process. But as you can see here, I got it up to about, I'd say a little over 200, which uh, seems to be a good temperature to get things going so that that powder could actually cure and melt over the surface of the metal here. Now with the part still hot, I move the heat lights back and I directly get into applying the powder here and then I will move the lights back to the part just to get things going so that the process of the curing continues here. Now by this part already being at a high temperature as I'm laying the powder it's actually already melting on the part. It's always good to do a 360 around your part just to make sure that you have full coverage so that there's no missing areas of the powder. And then if need be, there are certain areas that may require just a little more powder so that everything is nicely leveled. But as this powder is going through its curing phase, it actually flows out real nice. As long as the temperature remains at a consistent level, it actually flows out to where it's not really lumpy unless there's lumps in the preparation of the uh, part being prepared for the powder coating. But as you can see here, it's starting to produce a shiny overcoat over the metal. Now, when it comes to powder coating and also painting, uh, you could also get a good outcome by just using a can of spray but a uh, powder coating adds that extra amount of durability I find that it does not scratch as easy as paint and it's not as easy to remove it actually binds to the metal pretty good now this is the outcome I'd say this is a well I let it sit to cool down but as you can see the surface of the red coating here pretty much has a glossy layer to it. Now, if I wanted to, I do have a clear powder, which would also add an extra amount of clear to the model. But as the way it looks here, it does have a factory finish. And as you can see, the surface of the powder on the metal here is uh, pretty smooth. Has a nice, good, shiny look to it, which will add a much more sportier look to the truck here. 
and I'll just install everything here so you can see how it actually looks on the truck minus the uh, front cap but yes YouTube this is it has a much more better look to my likings here